She's been feverish since that time. Almost immediately. It's not the first time, I'm told. She was stung by a bee about ten years back and was ill for a week. Oh, frankly, ma'am, I know little more than what I've read about severe cases of bee sting. But where there's no improvement, some cases have led to coma. Are you saying she might die? Let's hope for the best, shall we? You calling me a liar, Judge? Your relationship with Miss Smith is open to question. Whether or not you two were friends in the past. Your only business is to take down the facts of that killing the way I give them to you. About them men abusing her. I killed them two weasels because I'd have been planted in the ground up there if I hadn't. You know that fella down there? No. You had to do with that woman, didn't you? Oh, God, please, God, no! I ain't God, mister. I'm closer to the devil. Now, don't you make no mistake about that. Oh, I didn't do it. Didn't do it. Didn't do what? Didn't have her. Didn't have a chance to. Tell it all. Zeb, there's so much I can't explain to you. I can only say I've always loved you, and I always will. But I can't ever see you again. Forgive me. Elizabeth. Now I'm uh, looking for a woman, uh, Elizabeth Smith. Uh, Beth's not back yet. She's delivering some books to the Swenson Post. I see. Your name? Zeb McCahan. I'm Beth's husband. I've heard a lot about Zeb McCahan. Inasmuch as we have something in common, meaning my wife, why don't you come inside? We'll talk about it. It's been a long time since I played the host, McCann. I'm not sure how entertaining you'll find me. Your name isn't Smith. Captain Robert Harrison. Yeah. We generally have a follow-up on that name, don't we? Glorious hero of the Fort Niles Massacre. In fact, uh, the latest memorial write-up of that massacre in Harper's Magazine suggested that a statue be erected of me in Washington. So you followed her up here, believing she was in trouble. About the size of it. Beth? Zeb? Sorry about all the lying I was forced to do. As you can see, we both survived the Fort Niles massacre. Survived? That's a very accurate description of the last 20 years. Survived. Didn't mean to interfere in your business. I'll be going. Oh, stay for supper, please, sir. Indeed, stay, McKay. Unless you find my presence intolerable. All right. I'll see you tomorrow, horse. A bit early for that, isn't it, Robert? And it will continue to get a bit early as we go on. I did assure you of that, love. Up until five years ago, I managed the reading fairly well. Having my sight, I was able to delude myself into believing that Elizabeth stayed on with me through loving devotion. Man has a unique facility for practicing self-deception, Mr. McCann. Robin, I don't think Zeb finds your self-deprecation very entertaining. Oh, he's been warned that I'm long out of practice as a host. Well, I'm going to be heading out to have a good dinner, Beth. Oh, Zeb, please. I wouldn't want you leaving without knowing exactly what happened. Don't you imagine less than the truth? That's right, Mr. McCann. You haven't said very much about finding a so-called dead hero. A half-alive, criminally negligent deserter. Maybe 
It's because I couldn't believe it'd be the truth if Beth stayed married to you. That's a kindness motivated, I suspect, more by my wife's charms than any respect for her husband. Robert, I won't hear of this. May I offer my apologies to Mr. McCann? You know, Captain, you remind me of a man trying to bear a cross and not doing a very good job of it. Bearing a cross? Trying? Battle of Fort Niles, officially named by the commission. I've had Elizabeth read it to me a hundred times over, hoping to discover, in fact, some justification for feeling the offended, the betrayed. But disobedience of orders on my part, stupidity on the part of my wife. Young wife wanting to be with her husband is not stupidity. My apologies. Again, substitute the word foolishness for stupidity. I think I'll get some night air until that mood mellows, which is usually at the bottom of a bottle, I believe. That's a hell of a woman, McCann. Agreed. But you'd sure never know that you thought that by listening to you. Before we were married, she told me about you. We were good friends. I'd say you were a lot more than good friends. She made that very clear. She loved you. She wanted that understood before she agreed to marry me. It was a long time ago, Harrison. Indeed it was. But you were her first love. She was mine. And one never forgets the glory of that first great passion. Did you? Yes. You're a liar. Now, the more I'm around you, Captain, the less I like you. <laughs> That's better. And I, on the other hand, I'm getting to like you quite a lot. You're a bad liar. Which means you haven't had much practice in lying. Harrison, she loves you. Yeah, I believe she does. But in a far different fashion from the way she loves you. Problem is, I'm destroying her. I've kept her trapped in this godforsaken wilderness for 20 years. I've done my best to drive her away. I noticed. She won't go, McCann. It's guilt. She thinks she did this to me. I told her not to come west until after the Indian trouble was over. She disregarded my orders. Some fool drivel about a wife ought to be with her husband. The Indians captured her about a mile from the fort. She was writing to me. She didn't know the fort was under siege. They stripped her on a hilltop in plain view of the fort, tied her to a stake. They told me they would peel her inch by inch unless I surrendered the garrison. I was under precise orders not to leave the fort under any circumstances until the relief calm arrived. I ignored the orders, and I led a charge up that hillside. My God, McCann. The glory and the courage that live in simple men. I had a reason to see what's my wife. But when I asked for volunteers, every man stepped forward, most of them green recruits who had never fired a shot in anger. And they rode to the death I offered them, shrieking their defiance. I didn't know until later that every man was killed except myself. And that after it was over, they cut Beth loose and left her there amid the dead. She searched for my body, found me still breathing. 
how she kept me alive and nursed me to the point where I could move about is a miracle I'll never understand. I got this during the battle. It would uh, eventually lead to tapping my way about with a cane. Now, the word we got was that most of the bodies of that massacre were unidentified. Yes, we heard that. It was then I saw a way out. Rather than face a court-martial, live up here. Place with no law, nobody asking questions. Captain, I'll tell you something. You're not going to get me to believe that you were guilty of anything in that massacre. I'd have done the same thing in your place. And you'd have been court-martialed, McCann found guilty of disobedience of orders and desertion. For some men, such a disgrace might be bearable, but you see, my family boasts one of the proudest military traditions in American history. My great-grandfather was with George Washington at Valley Forge in 1778. My grandfather with Andrew Jackson at Horseshoe Bend in 1815. My father was a colonel, decorated for heroism by General Winfield Scott during the defeat of Santa Ana at the Battle of Cherubusco in 1848. It was inconceivable that the last of the Harrisons should sully the memory of the brave men that had gone before. For their sakes, I preferred to let the world believe that I had died doing my duty. Now, Captain Harrison, I appreciate you telling me this story. Won't go any further than me. I'll forget it when I walk out this door. Okay. Take her with you. Harrison, if you think she'd leave you, you don't know what you're saying. I won't have her staying out of a sense of loyalty. That's what it is now. And she loves you. That's never changed. She's made her choice. She's put everything else behind her. Damn it, the choice was made out of gratitude! Whatever it is, she came back here when she didn't have to. I won't have her indebted to me any longer. Why don't you quit doing so much complaining and accept the fact, mister, that she's here with you because she's wise enough to know that's where she wants to be. Harrison. Next time you want to try something like that, why don't you think on it a week or two? Here it'd be even better. Maybe there's such a thing as reincarnation. Come back to you a whole man. There is such a thing as reincarnation. And you succeed in killing yourself. I swear I'll get even with you. I'll have an Indian medicine man bring you back as a buffalo chip.
That horse I took, Zeb, I had it returned. Yeah, I figured that. Good times. Good times. Would have worked, too. I mean, if things had been different. If they'd been different. Forgive me for not being honest with you. Nothing to forgive. Man, a woman, we were lucky. We got a second chance. Relive some yesterday's memories. Touch some old fires. I'm never gonna forget those days we spent up in that mountain. Some people might feel sorry for that man standing there and a light he can't see. I don't. You're lucky. You got you. You're a good man, Zebulon. Goodbye, Elizabeth. <laughs>